Back. We're getting closer and closer to election day. So how is the state of Ohio looking as we gear up for November 7th? This afternoon we have Ohio Secretary of State Frank LaRose with us to talk about just that. And welcome. Thanks for being here. Uh, what interest are you seeing so far with early voting? Are you expecting to see a big turnout? Ohioans are engaged, civically minded. We had a special election in August and just as I predicted, there was high turnout for that. It follows a long uh, history here of, of Ohioans turning out and our boards of elections do great work making sure that it's a seamless process when they do. And the state of Ohio had you know, the earlier election, now this one. Are you expecting with hot button issues like issue one and two with abortion and marijuana will be probably drawing more interest or is Ohio typically a very active state voting? We see good turnout in any election, but yeah, there's interest in issue one and issue two. Issue one's a constitutional amendment about abortion. Issue two is about uh, medic or, uh, uh, recreational use marijuana. Uh, but of course there's local contests as well. Mayor's races, city council races, school board races. I encourage people to really pay attention to school board. It makes such a difference. Are you seeing a uh, the numbers are up with early voting mm -hmm. uh, that indicate and what does that tell you about election day? We've seen a steady climb over the years. The fact is once Ohioans try it, they like it. They realize that it has the same security and convenience you get on election day. It's a great way to cast your ballot and we have more hours and days of early voting than most other states in the country. I saw early voting is like yeah, 730 AM to 730 PM Monday through Friday. I mean, there's a lot of options out yep. there to go to ours is on. We have Saturdays. We have Sundays. Yeah. Uh, most states don't have Sunday early voting. Some faith communities do a thing called souls at the polls where you go to vote uh, after church on Sunday. It's, it's a lot of good options and there's still time to request an absentee ballot if you want to vote from your own kitchen table. What would you like to tell voters now ahead of this now about preparation for voting? So it's a big logistical undertaking involving thousands and thousands of Ohioans in a completely bipartisan way. It seems like in Washington, Republicans and Democrats can't agree what day of the week it is, but at your board of elections, it's a completely bipartisan process. It's secure and you can be part of the process by signing up to be a poll worker. We're always looking for men and women to do that work. VoteOhio.gov is the place to sign up. Whatever you do, make sure you cast your ballot so your voice can be heard. Where are we with redistricting? Uh, mm -hmm. I, I was talking to Bob Latta uh, uh, several weeks ago. He was telling me, I mean, I checked up his, his district goes all the way from the border by Fort Wayne all the way over to the edge mm -hmm. of Akron and Cleveland. Are there efforts to clean that up and get things a little more neighborhood related? So the congressional redistricting process was like all redistricting processes recently was subject to a lawsuit uh, that had been dismissed recently. So the people that were filing that complaint decided to dismiss the lawsuit. So it looks like those congressional districts are going to remain in place. And again, our website, voteohio.gov slash districts, you can look up what your district is. When it comes to state legislative, state house and state senate races, we had to go through that process of redrawing those lines just recently. Thankfully, we got a bipartisan vote. Yes, we were able to get the Democrats and the Republicans on the redistricting commission to agree. It's never a perfect process. One side's going to like it. The other side may not. That's the nature of redistricting. But I think that with that bipartisan bipartisan vote, we got to the stable process that should last for the rest of the decade, hopefully. And, and the problem like he has, for example, he says, I have to be up on issues near the Fort Wayne area, mm -hmm. the Toledo area, the Cleveland area, yeah. the Akron area, and that's put in, in, in the driving he does just to campaign or just uh, have meetings with constituents and stay abreast of what is matters to people. There, there, there's competing things that you want to try to do with redistricting. You want to keep communities of interest together. Uh, you also want to keep it as compact as possible. Many times you want to try to create a competitive district where both parties have a have an even shot of being at the uh, you know being able to elect somebody uh, that shares their values. But regardless, the, the process you know results in the districts that we have, and it's never going to be sort of geographically uh, necessarily a, a box or a square or whatever else. But we do try to get those districts to be as reasonable as possible. We got a minute, about a minute left. Yeah. Back to the the election. Are you seeing a lot of outside money coming in on both sides of issue one? into uh, and as opposed to just being locally raised money. This has uh, unfortunately been the case in Ohio for a long time and really what we're seeing is a lot of outside money on the yes on issue one side uh, in particular. And again, this is from the East Coast and the West Coast. Ohio is a test market state. Mm -hmm. It works that way with consumer products, menus at fast food restaurants. They test them out in Ohio. And the same thing works in politics. Some of these pretty far left groups want to try to get something done in Ohio so that then they can export it to other states. Proof of concept.
I'm not sure you heard this, but Ohio is the heart of it all. You know that. It right? is. Always will be. Frank, great to see you. Thank you so much. You as well. Keep in mind, WTOL 11 is here to answer your questions about the November election. Right now on our website, we have a county by county breakdown of what you should expect to see on the ballot. Just go to WTOL.com to learn more. Chris?